Yo, what is up guys, Volty here with a brand new video. Now, I'm sure most of you guys are well into Battle for Azeroth and you guys have been leveling up or trying to gear up for Mythic Dungeons. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over five hidden tricks in Battle for Azeroth everyone should be using. So number one is 15 extra item levels on your Heart of Azeroth. So in case you guys don't know, every time your Heart of Azeroth levels up, you gain an extra two item levels on that necklace piece. We'll go up and up in the item levels and getting Azerite power is is a great way just to increase your item level by a small amount. However, there is a way to get 15 extra item levels for your Heart of Azeroth that not a lot of people know about. So when you're doing world quests and stuff, you may have seen a faction called the Champions of Azeroth. So the Champions of Azeroth is quite a unique faction and both Horde and Alliance have reputation with this faction. The most interesting thing about reputation with this faction is that every time you hit a new reputation level with them, you gain an extra 15 item levels on your Heart of Azeroth. So one once you hit that new reputation threshold, if you speak to Magni Brunsbeard, he will increase your Heart of Azeroth by an extra 15 item levels. So when you hit Friendly, Honored and Revered, you can get an extra 15 item levels just by speaking to Magni Brunsbeard. That being said, this is never told to you by World of Warcraft and you never get a quest telling you to go there, so a lot of people miss this. And you may be thinking, how do you get reputation with the champions of Azeroth? Well, the best way is basically to take up any world quest that involves this faction, so whenever you see a world quest involving the champions of Azeroth you always want to do it because getting that extra plus 15 item level on your necklace is something very very nice. So tip number two is that you should turn off war mode at level 120. So I'm sure most of you guys have been playing BFA using war mode as war mode gives you an extra 10% experience as well as 10% on other bonuses such as gold and other things that you acquire during the questing experience. But once you hit level 120, it's not really worth it to have war mode on. Considering that you will be ganked many times while you have war mode on, it will make doing world quests much, much slower once you have war mode on. So whenever you're trying to grind through the world quests and trying to get an emissary chest, it's always worth going to your home city and turning off war mode before doing it. This way, you can actually do the world quest without being ganked and interrupted, which will make the experience take two times as long as it really should. You will get 10% less bonus on the rewards you get from these world quests, but in general, this will be a lot quicker for you to do. And if you're watching this video and you don't know how to unlock world quests, it's actually pretty simple. In fact, all you have to do is complete the faction war campaign as well as get some friendly reputations with BFA factions. For Alliance, you need to be friendly with the Pradmore Admiralty, Storm's Wake, and the Order of Embers. For Horde, you need to be friendly with the Zandalari Empire, Talani's Expedition, and Voldeni. Doing so will start a quest where you can actually unlock world quests on your map. Real quick, I have a challenge for you guys and you only have 5 seconds to do it. Go down, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel right now, and you will have great luck for the entire week. Go down, just try it, I promise that it works, and let's go on with the rest of the video. Tip number three is Goblin Gliders. Now, Goblin Gliders is a really good alternative at this stage of an expansion where flying mounts have been disabled. So flying mounts is obviously a way quicker way of traversing through a map and ground mounts are much, much slower compared to flying mounts. Fortunately, you can use an item called Goblin Glider Kit. The Goblin Gliders basically allowed you to glide in midair, but the most important thing is that they will increase your speed basically to the speed of a flying mount. So not only do you get a slow fall, but you also get to move very quickly. So if you need to go for one point of the map and you're already up a mountain or you're on some high ground and you need to get somewhere quickly, always use a goblin glider and you can get there in a fraction of the time it would take you just by getting there normally using a ground mount. So pretty much everyone will want to buy a stack of goblin glider kits and they're pretty damn cheap so there's no reason why you shouldn't buy some. Number four is Azerite Reforging. Now a lot of people don't know that you can actually reset some of the traits that you have selected for your Azerite armor. There's a misconception that some players have where once they select a trait for the Azerite armor, they cannot change it later. But fortunately enough, it is actually quite simple to change the traits on your Azerite armor. You can basically reset them as you would reset your own talents. In order to reset the traits of your Azerite armor, all you have to do is go into one of these transmogrification shops. There will be an NPC next to the transmog NPC 
that can reforge your Azurite armor. And doing so costs a very small amount of money. And after that, you can now change your traits as you would change your talents. So that is just a quick tip if you have made some decisions with your Azurite armor that you wish to change now. Number five is that you can use portals to get to the BFA continents. So a lot of people have been taking the really long route, which is using the boats to go to the new BFA continent. And you really don't need to do that. Fortunately enough, in Stormwind and in Orgrimmar, there are some portals that you can use to get to the BFA continent instantly. So in Stormwind, if you go into the Wizard Sanctum, that big tower in the Mages Quarter, on the highest floor, you can find a portal going to Boralus, which will take you instantly to the BFA continent and you don't need to take a boat. Of course, there is an alternative for Horde players. For the Hordes, you can find a portal going to Zandalar in the Cleft of Shadows that you can find in Orgrimmar. You can get there very quickly and you don't need to take any long transportation to get to the BFA continent. So Battle for Azeroth is just doing very well in general. In fact, it has seen some insane sales on the first day. It has actually broken a record of first day sales of 3.4 million copies of Battle for Azeroth that has been sold. Battle for Azeroth has exceeded a lot of people's expectations and they are really enjoying this new expansion. And the sales figures for this expansion shows that a lot of people are giving World of Warcraft a chance again. Many of the cool aspects of World of Warcraft of the past have been implemented into BFA. I think Blizzard is trying to rekindle the magic of World of Warcraft that inspired so many people to play back in the day. And looks like World of Warcraft is growing in popularity. Time will tell if this expansion continues to be a success, but right now it looks pretty positive for World of Warcraft. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel for more videos. This is Volti signing out. Thank you.